what's up guys it's guilt spire here and welcome back to champions of the fog we are here today with season one round one of division two with cerebral assassins versus object of the depression and today, I'm joined by someone new. I am joined by Ganicus, a new member of the Producers of Fog. How are you doing today, Ganicus? Hope you're doing well. Hi, I'm doing super good today. I'm so excited to see this matchup. Get things ready, rock and rolling. This is going to be some good gameplay today. 100%, 100%. For those who uh, don't know or are not familiar uh, with these teams, that was these Rebel Assassins we saw in Season 0. And some recognizable names there, you know, Running Man, um, you know, that one guy D, Scuba Steve, and many more. Um, but uh, for those who are not part of the comp scene or not aware, we also have Object of Depression, uh, which is a pretty well-known team from Vigo's Court. Uh, they were on hiatus uh, for quite some time, but are back now. And so I am very excited to see what they are bringing to the table, though there are some recognizable names here, um, uh, you know, that we have seen in Shams of Fog before. So, uh, Genicus, tell me a bit, little bit about your, uh, your comp experience. Yeah, man, so I've been watching uh, a lot of comp lately in the last probably uh, six to eight months. I've gotten, I've gotten used to these teams. I'm you know, I, as someone that plays DVD casual, like seeing some of these survivor and killer matches is pretty insane because they do things that I dream of doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, and hopefully one day when I go up, I can. But um, it, it, it is incredible. It's beautiful to see. It's uh, it's honestly art in my in my opinion. There's some insane things that are done here. Some great uh, callouts, of great gameplay. So really. You know, chat, me, everybody, we should be all pumped up because it's going to be some some good good stuff this morning. No, absolutely, absolutely. And it, honestly, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Honestly, CA, as we saw them in Season 0, were much more killer-focused uh, versus, I know, OOD, as I have played against them, have a pretty good balance of survivor and killer alike. So the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to here is to seeing uh, what exactly, you know, CA will be bringing to the table to try and overcome their shortcomings in this scenario, whether, you know, between Season 0 and Season 1, they've really upped their game survivor side. Because we look back at Season 0, you know, that was really where they suffered the most. And so I'm curious with that time between uh, the end of the regular season, Season 0, and the beginning of this season, if they really put the nose to the grindstone, and really stepped up their game in that regard. Yeah, I'm excited to see it as well. I know, I mean, just with the uh, Serial Assassins, you know, they, they've been working a lot this this a uh, little bit of break. They were able to get their team back together and uh, some new pieces. So we'll see how it goes. You know, you, it, it, that's a huge transition going from killer focus to all right. Let's change our game up and see what we can do survivor side. You know, so I'm excited to see that transition and see uh, how well they do today. Yeah, no, absolutely. Especially with the, the survivor teams that we're seeing currently in Season 1. Um, you know, we have a lot of strong survivor teams now. Where I feel like that's one thing that was kind of missing in Season 0. If you look back at all the scorecards, it was so killer heavy. And now we have all these survivor teams that might put tip, you know, push the needle in the other direction. And really is going to put pressure on these killer mains that, you know, are more M1 focused rather than, you know, the nurses, the spirits, the blights of the world. Um, speaking of killers, though, you know, we can't ignore uh, what uh, just came to DVD the other day, the Pinhead or the Cenobite. Uh, give me your thoughts there, you know, as we are waiting for this lobby. I am curious, uh, you know, have you gotten a chance to play against or play as thus far? Yeah, so most of the time I play killer, a lot of killer, um, and... The Cenobite has been a lot of fun, uh, challenging at times, but when you can get that hit on, that that that, that uh, nice chain reaction, man, it it throws survivors for a for for a loop. You get you get messed up. So uh, I I do feel like the Cenobite's a, a great character to have on Dead by Daylight. 
I love the, the mechanics. I love the cosmetics. Um, and it just brings a little bit something different. I'm always, I'm always been a fan of killers that do something else. Yeah. Uh, besides, uh, you know, your M1 or your shock attacks or anything like that. Like, I for some reason love playing pig. You know, putting someone's party hat on, as we call it, and having them like a little mini game inside the game. I think those things are fun. Um, and so I think it, uh, you know, bringing a cinema adds a little bit more to that. So. No, 100%. And I have been playing a ton of Xenobite. I've actually already gotten him to P3. I, he's the first killer that I've actually gotten to P3. All the rest of them I focused in on. All right, get all their perks, so on and so forth. But I was like, you know what? Kind of did the math. I'm like, makes a lot of sense. I'm going to P3 him anyways. You know, let me just get him P3 now, then get all the perks. And I'm still going through my survivors in P3 and all of them first before I go back to my killers. Um, but that being said, you know, playing a lot of Xenobite recently... You know, very interesting to see how they're being played. They're definitely high skill and what I would refer to as low reward, unfortunately. To where, like, for the high skill you get, you don't get a lot of reward. At the same time, though, I'm still very excited to see um, how the comp scene eventually adopts this killer. And if we see any play from them. Personally, I think there's a possibility as I think they're most strong around those tight loops where you can hit them with a possessed chain and immediately get that hit because of it. Though the longer and, you know, more extensive loops with pallets and windows, that's really where he suffers and just becomes that M1 killer. With the exception of Chain Hunt, which is such, such a powerful ability. Yeah, I don't think we've seen the final form of a Xenobite, you know? I think there's still things that, they, that they, they're going to do and I... I think, uh, like you said, uh, high risk, lower reward. I think that's that, that'll change up in, in the next coming months. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, no, absolutely. The biggest thing beside that, you know, even if the Xenobite doesn't see a lot of playing comp or isn't really seen as all too strong, what I am curious about, though, is the perks, especially things like Skurchoke and Deadlock. Deadlock, I'm not as interested in, in comp, unfortunately, because I do have an opinion that... Uh, Tier 3 is worse than Tier 1, since it is a 30 second timer in comparison to a 20. So if you're running Pop, for example, it's going to be absolutely miserable when you have only 15 seconds in order to get that Pop activation. Where on the other hand, uh, with uh, Scourge Hook, I think it's just a sloppy Butcher replacement for a lot of killers. And I'm wicked excited to see something kind of break up the meta a little bit. Sloppy Butcher, I wouldn't say, is meta for every killer, but for those who do use it, I just think Scourge Hook is arguably better. Absolutely. I think you're going to see a lot of different combinations in the next couple of, uh, of months come by and, and see what what perks really matter to uh, come from Xenobite over to, to competitive play. I'm that's, that's a great observation, and I think uh, I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, no, absolutely. And also to confirm for those asking in chat, no, Xenobite is not allowed this season, unfortunately. Neither are there perks. Um, it is one of those things where we like to give a full season's breath to have behavior, you know, figure out any different bugs, uh, tweak the killer or the perks at all. That way they are in their best form once it comes to competitive play. So no worries in that regard. But I do see everyone here in the lobby. With that being said, do want to confirm with our ref giraffe, are we good to go or do we have, still have a little bit to wait? I need one more build. We had a little bit of a reset problem. Somebody's game has to re-verify, so they're replacing it. Gotcha, gotcha. Appreciate the so heads up. I just up. need that last one. Gotcha. Yeah, no, unfortunately, Steam and Dead by Daylight do be what they do. Uh, so definitely understand the plight that is Steam re-verification for some people's v PCs. They are going to take quite a while, so I think the best case scenario is 100% to replace uh, that player for better or for worse. But uh, with man, that being the Steam, hmm? Steam, Steam sometimes be wild though, man. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> uh, biggest thing that I know DVD suffers from is uh, the sync errors, and you don't want to mess with those. Uh, worst thing you can do is try and press on and have your entire account reset. So, uh, you know, you need to re-verify those files. You do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, 100%. But today on Survivor's Side, we do see Pustalork. We see Embler, Em, 
and Blur, uh, Sorty, and Phantasm. So, wicked, wicked excited to see what they bring here today. And we should be getting started here momentarily. I do believe our first map of the night is Wrecker's Yard, followed by Grim Pantry. So, going to be interesting to see what killers these teams bring to the table. If you're looking at the current uh, layout based on the maps and based on these two teams, uh, what are your thoughts? What killers do you think will be seen today? You know, here's the thing. Like, you, you, man, I, I don't want to say your usuals, right? You got your blacks, <laughs> your nurses, and things like that. But really, you kind of have to. Like, if, if I'm a team, especially in the first game, I want to go for the throw. You know, yep. I want to send that, that little bit of fear into that opposing team that we got this. You know, and, and, I, and I think that should be the game plan for both sides, whether you're survivor or killer, you know. You want to make sure that your first game, you, you put your foot down and you're literally saying, hey, we're here to win this, right? And so sometimes you, you got to use your your, uh, your your great killers out there and, and just put a little bit of fear because tell you what, like if the second game comes along and, and the survivor team has destroyed or the killer side has destroyed, that's that sends a little bit more sweat. That sends a little bit more, you know, anxiety throughout that losing losing side. And then it's all gates are open you know and so i do feel like we're gonna see somebody um maybe maybe higher tier maybe your blight and or something like that uh, but but of course you know if you use them now you know you gotta be careful because you can't use them later you know so we'll see yeah no absolutely absolutely i i think that honestly with this season we you know allowed for every killer to be used twice so i am fully expecting to see you know oh. nurse spirit blight used often but it is the question of what is considered a top 10 in dbd comp right now and there are those that are kind of fringe cases which i do expect some you know specified play like the deathslingers the huntress of the world um, uh, but, you know, there's definitely that top 10, the Spirit, the Blight, the Nurse, Hag, Twins, Oni, Bubba, Freddy, Pyramid Head, so on and so on, that I think are definitely going to be staples of this season. I'm always, Guild Player, I'm always a sucker for great Spirit gameplay, okay? From, from the time I've watched Champions of the Fog to other things, there's, like, people playing Spirit always gets to me, like, when they phase it. Not to interrupt real quick, but just do see that Giraffe has unmuted. Any news for us? We are good to go. Awesome, awesome. In that case, oh, here we, go. we are going to be jumping right on in to our first match of Division 2, Round 1. Cerebral Assassins versus Object of Depression. We're excited. I highly, highly agree with you. Um, Gannicus, you know, good spirit gameplay, absolutely love it. Especially now that with this most recent update, the spirit has been fixed where she is able to hear environmental sounds like footsteps. Uh, especially if used on a map like uh, Grim Pantry, right? Where the footsteps are very, very audible. Um, so that would be a great example of uh, a good spirit map, to say the least. Oh yeah, that's, oh my goodness. I, I... We're ready for a great game. These two teams are going to give it to us. I'm so pumped up for this. I'm happy to hear that, and so am I. And once these survivors do ready on up, I believe we'll be good to go. And with that being said, let's take a look, maybe. Uh, it looks like they, uh, they're... <laughs> They are getting some last-minute uh, discussions on builds, but should be all good to go. And as been brought to my attention, as I will say, you know, sometimes I do some perk verification uh, with the stream up. Apologies about that. So I'll be moving over to the intermission screen uh, in the meanwhile to hide that as I do a quick double check just to ensure that the Savart builds are good to go. There's no double ups. There's no add-ons that they cannot bring. Especially if OD being a newer uh, team to this league. Always want to be better safe than sorry. Though I know they uh, have enough comp experience where I have faith that they should be good to go. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting the chills here. Here we go. <laughs> here we go, guys. Let's freaking go. Can't be log now unless uh, you know console load times. They they take a little bit. 
That's true too. That oh man, this is gonna be fun. I'm so excited. I'm happy to hear that. And so here's a question for you again, I guess, as we are loaded in, what's your cup of tea? What's your poison? Are you killer main, survivor main, a little bit of both? Uh, a little bit of both. Actually, I'm more killer main now than ever. Um, and I'll tell you what, it's going to sound horrible, but I actually started playing killer eight months ago. The reason for it was Q times. <laughs> but Fair now, enough. But now I have loved the killer side. Like, I, I love survivor as well, but killer is my jam. And I'm, I'm sold. Oh, here we go. Awesome. Everything looks good on my end on the quick inspection. And we are starting off strong here with Osaka on the oh spirit. Or not, no, yeah, yeah, sorry. Talking about spirit, it's a nurse. I'm like, wait a second. Like, I know what it is. I see what it is, but 100% nurse. Uh, with that being said, you know, looking around real quick, just based on environmentals, we see a lit totem, and we also do see a corrupt intervention. And not only do we see one set of totems, we see two, if not more. So, suggesting to me that we could be seeing some haunted ground on the nurse here. Man, if, if haunted ground comes out and it snowballs, maybe, you know, this, is, this stuff gets crazy with nurse. No, no doubt about that. It, it can be very, very strong. And, you know, there's even been talks about it with DBE, for example, where it has been banned. You know, I definitely want to take a look at it in the long run and see if it proves to be necessary. Obviously, in this league, we do have double range nurse banned and uh, replacement for double recharge nurse. So definitely not as powerful as it could be, but still very, very strong perk. Though we do see the RNG factor here, you know, Object of Depression had a one out of three chance of cleansing uh, Haunted Ground. And uh, not to spoil it for all you guys, but they didn't. So uh, they are currently in a position right now to where as long as they don't cleanse any other totem, which they don't currently, they should prove to be fine here. No, absolutely. Oh, in that first hit, a lot of a lot of uh, teams end up just trying to wait out that uh, corrupt intervention. That's I think that's a solid play. But right now, this is going to be interesting with this chase. Yeah, I mean, and they did a really good job. It's almost a full two minutes up, so that corrupt intervention does not have long to last. And I will say, you know, certified persona doing a good job maneuvering here, but will end up being the first person on the hook. Yeah, here we go. Now this is where it gets crazy. You know, you, you have your one person up. You got your generator done. You know what? What is the play here, Gilsberry? Tell me, what would you do? I mean, there, there's a few different options here, and honestly, Sorty being that close to Nurse, not respecting Terror Radius on that generator, I think that's a really bad idea for multiple reasons. Because A gives Nurse that ability to pop that gen. All that time they spent there is all for naught now. But now Nurse is inclined to kind of sit around here. You're guarding not just the hook, but you're also guarding a gen now. And so you're in this really awkward position as a survivor team, as at this point, Osaka only has about 30 seconds to wait before Certified Persona ends up on second stage. It's, it really leads at the two for one special, right? Where if you're good, if you have a generator that close, why are you going to leave, uh, you know, the, 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 the person on hook right now, you know? Exactly, especially if it does deny things like uh, deliverance value later down the road. We do see another gen get popped in meanwhile, and that is the, the the issue, right? Where people can work on gens all the while, but we do see that progression in Osaka immediately saying, all right, I've done my dues, and let's go for the second chase, and is immediately on Zarina and gets the down pretty quickly too, so... I think that's an excellent execution of what they needed to do here. You know, though OOD did end up healing Sorty, that is upwards of 32 seconds spent healing in the meanwhile. And that results in not just a hook, but also a progression for Cerebral Assassins here. Absolutely. When you, when you can get someone in second stage and, and get a down like that so quickly, as, as a killer, that is a, that is a good payout. You know, absolutely, and I think, the, you know, this is exactly what I expected to see, which was Osaka immediately going for the Fang Min, and life is great and all, but ain't any good against the Nurse, oh and if they goodness. don't have a uh, Decisive Strike here, that will be the end of Certified Persona, though Osaka does appear to want to get a little aggressive here, maybe fearing the Decisive Strike, and decides to go after Pustalork instead. Yeah, I mean, that right there was a little bit of a slug count, right? If you're in that decisive strike, now you pick him up and you're good to go. 
But yeah, you kind of, they wanted that extra hit. Extra hit didn't work out, so they said, you know what, let's go pick him up. You know, absolutely. What I am surprised about, however, is that last gen that they're right next to had probably 70%, give or take, on it. And Osaka just said, you know what? Who needs Pop Goes the Weasel? Let's just go right on into another chase and does find the Nancy pretty quickly, but also finds Phantasm, who is still injured off of their unhook. And they will get down for it. That was a solid play. Unfortunately, when you have two people that close together, that's a that's a, that's a nurse's you know that's a buffet right there for nurse right you can choose your target you go after them and, and ggs but uh, we'll see if these survivors have anything to pull uh, out, of, out of their hats right now because uh, this match is going a little sideways oh there we go yeah i mean at the end of the day the biggest thing that i look at for a killer especially in comp is by the third gen being completed you do want one person out of the match and not only does osaka have one person out of the match they now have another person on death hook Fun thing about uh, DVD, especially comp DVD, in pubs, most times you can actually predict who the DS user is based on the obsession markers. I'm not sure if anyone's noticed it besides myself, but funny thing is, in custom matches or kill your friends, DVD does not actually work that way. The obsession uh, RNG is pretty much just up in the air, so anyone can be the obsession, making it that much harder for those in these scenarios to know who has DS, who doesn't. I think that's actually, like, part of the intrigue, right? It's like, who, who in the world has a DS? I think that's a lot of fun. It makes it a, lot, a little bit more fun for me, at least. No, I 100% agree. At the same time, I kind of wish I would see more uh, meta play with it if it was similar to uh, pubs where people would run like Metal Man to try and draw the uh, obsession markers to them or object of obsession, which though is banned currently. But Phantasm yeah, does Metal go Man back play. down and Osaka does see another survivor here and does get a hit on Pustalork. Uh The question is, will they respect the obsession markers as I had mentioned earlier, or will they go for the down and they go for Pustalork and get the down here? Absolutely, you can get more after that one now. Not that this just this is in a world of hurt. These survivors, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, at this point, especially in comp, I think the right move here is to slug out Phantasm if they do not have a unbreakable. Go find Sorty, who has just announced their location, and uh, get the down there. Either that, or confirm where Hatch is and be able to end the match. You know, getting those points, crucial. They got they they confirmed their location, but that got that gen done and now kind of a waiting game. We have a we have a slug situation and someone on hook in the basement. Uh this is uh this is, this could be a lot of fun though. We'll see what we'll see what Swordy's got in got in store for us. Yeah, I mean especially with uh Wrecker's Yard where Shaq ends up being in the middle. You know, there are only a, a handful of maps with this type of setup, especially. So, you know, having this strong of a position, one person basement, one person not too far off, that slug. And the third and final survivor being injured here is just such a strong position for Osaka to be in. Absolutely. This is a, this is a beautifully played by Osaka. Everybody's around this side of his, of his area. And we'll see. Oh. We do see that final progression from Pustalork in basement, but we do see Phantasm getting back up for better or for worse. Osaka now having to quickly identify where these survivors are and go for the down as soon as possible. And there's still just one gen left. This is a, it's gonna get interesting. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if one of these survivors can carry a long enough chase, you know, that could go a very long way. Especially in a scenario that a gen is already, you know, 70%, 50%, what have you. But Osaka not wasting any time and getting Sorty down on the ground. And interestingly enough, going for the pickup. I don't know if maybe they know where Phantasm is, or if they know where Hatch is instead. Or they're just banking on the fact that they can get, uh... Phantasm down before uh, Sorty is able to either suicide or die via the timer. Yeah, that was an interesting game uh, play as well. I, I would have thought they were going to slug, but hey, at this point, Osaka can do whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> and everything. 110%. This comes down to points now. Oh, and 
Looks like, oh, I don't know if goodness. maybe they just found it as they're meandering around or what, but they are on top of Hash. I'm surprised they're not going to sit on it, though, as, you know, if it's a virus smart, there is that possibility of a body block. Um, uh, but it looks like they are now in a prime position. These do see scratch marks off in the distance that will result in a chase. The question is, will Phantasm be able to make use of this time? And the answer is no. So that will result in the final progression for Sortie, and will result in the final hook for Phantasm. And let's take a look, see at what our final points are for this match. You're looking at 14 points to Object of Depression, to 43 points for Cerebral Assassin and Osaka. So amazing start here by Cerebral Assassins, and that'll put them into an early lead. Really, this is what you were looking from, from, uh, from, from either team, right? One, one team was gonna, you know, put their foot on the ground and say, "Hey, we're here," you know. And I think Cerebral Assassins did that. Now, a second game could be totally different, but right now, you know, momentum, you know, is on Cerebral Assassins' side. They gotta be feeling pretty good about what they just accomplished. And, and I, I think uh, that you take this momentum and, and you kind of snowball into the next game and, and say, okay. It's our, it's our turn, you know what I mean? No, absolutely. I think, honestly, if you can really apply the pressure to the opposing team on that first match, it really does go a long way. So seeing a very strong uh, start here by Cerebral Assassins will definitely put the pressure on Object of Depression as they move into the killer spot here in just a few moments. Yeah, well, momentum and pressure is, is, is true in any sports, in any type of sporting event, and especially this one. So uh, you, you got to look at it and go, okay, if, if we're down, we, we got to shake it off, you know, one game at a time, and we, we got to keep going. But if you're if you're Cerebral Assassins right now, you got to feel really good about what you've accomplished. But, but now it's don't, don't take your foot off the pedal, all right? That's the yep. worst thing you can do. You know, there's teams out there that might say, okay, you know, we can take it easy. Do, you cannot do that. These are just too good of teams for people to do that, you know? No, 110%. And that's the biggest thing. You know, I've seen a few scenarios uh, in comp where they go, okay, you know, we have a little bit of lead. We can use, you know, a B, C tier killer. We're fine. And then they kind of end up regretting that in the long run. So 110%, you know, do not let your foot up off the gas as it can go awry very quickly if you are not careful. Absolutely. We, we've all seen those uh, those comebacks, right? Where it's like, how in the world did that happen? And it's a lot of grit, determination, but also, hey, they decided to, to take it easy and we literally went for the throat. So I'm excited to see what happens in this go around. Yeah, no, absolutely. And since this is the first round for Division 2, you know, I would not be surprised if Ob Object of Depression comes out swinging as well, brings in their nurse. The biggest thing is, is like I said, they can only be used twice here. So if we see two nurses, that's two nurses that have been taken out of rotation for Division 2. And so every other team might be watching this and going, okay, you know, keep on bringing out those S tier killers. That's fine by us. It means we have to worry about them less later down the road. Yeah, yeah, that is that is very true. People, other teams are looking at this and going, okay, so Cerebral Assassins, one nurse down, you know, but the thing about it is, is, is what have you done for me lately? You know, that, that's just really the, the, your model. You, you got to you gotta do what's right for your team and taking that W is what's right. Whether you use a, uh, an S tier, I guess, killer or, or somebody else, it, this is, a, you know, it, it's time. You can't, you can't afford to, to be losing out there. Now, 110%. Uh, I will have to give everyone a heads up real quick, as uh, anyone on Steam will know what I'm talking about. But we are uh, we're in store for a bit of 80-12 Q&A time, as uh, looks like Steam servers are either going under some maintenance or have gone down for whatever reason. So we will keep an eye on this. Usually 812 error codes do last in between 5 to 15 minutes. Uh, so we will reset the timer for our killer 
a lobby as we usually give them 15 minutes to get the lobby going. Uh, as I'm not able to join myself, it uh, will be a bit of time. Do not know if this is a U.S. Central issue, but for all of you on Steam in chat, let me know if you are experiencing a Steam outage as well, or if this is just a U.S. Central issue. Uh, but with that being said, you know, this gives us a little bit of time to chat a little bit more, uh, whether that be about uh, the previous match or otherwise. I am getting an invite from Zappy, so I'm going to say maybe it's a U.S. Central issue, which is going to be a bit miserable. Um, if that is the case. Uh, I don't know, um, uh, Ganicus, are you, uh, Steam? Yeah, total Steam. I'm West Coast. Um, it, I, I also get these issues sometimes. You know, it, it makes for a, you know, a little bit of waiting time. But if you guys, honestly, if, if you want to ask me questions, I'm an open book. Um, but that last match we saw was a killer's dream. It was a clinic for the killer uh nurse play was beautiful those flicks this that's what gets me jealous though Spire. is those flakes dude one day <laughs> one day i'm gonna be able to do that okay i told i'm telling everybody one day but uh it, it was beautiful to see the control of the map um there were some things that went wrong of course doing that gen i think that's really that was really the, the game changer is that gen at the beginning while osaka was hooking that uh the survivor up and uh the other survivor was really close to, to close to the killer right there doing the gen that that was a turning point because osaka all they had to do was just be there right and and that was beautiful so no 110 percent without a doubt in my mind and you know that's something that i'm definitely working on myself where previously i have definitely played a lot of nurse and i'm not going to say i'm a fantastic nurse but i'm definitely you know better than the average i would say on the bright side, I will say real quick, uh, looks like the 8012 error code has subsided, though uh, DBD is now having some issues for me where I'm not able to actually join a lobby or really do all too much. So it looks like Steam is still uh, having a few hiccups here. We're going to try and reset DBD and see if that fixes it all. But uh, as of this moment, we do have a short delay on this second match of uh, Division 2 Round 1, CA versus OOD. So, fingers crossed that this does subside pretty quickly so we can jump into this. Uh, so, I do appreciate everyone's patience and understanding, but as we do wait here, uh, tell me, Ganicus, you know, you said that you're a killer main. You said that you've been playing for them for about eight months now. What killers are you really focusing on? Are you like myself? Are you a jack of all trades? Do you play everyone? I play every killer as well. You know, I love to mess around with a bunch of them. Um, I, I've come to the realization that I, it probably hurts me a lot because blood points, it ain't easy getting them blood points. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I've split them among all my killers, and so that's really bad because you get into those uh, uh, lobbies that you need some st some extra stuff and um, things happen. But, yeah, I absolutely, like, honestly – my favorites right now i i love me some some plague some spirit uh i like my mimi killers you know clowns up there i love clown um then i got my, my boy nemesis out there with his tentacles I, I love him as well so uh but i i will play anything i i love learning and this is one of the things that you know the reason i i love watching um dbd esports is the fact that i can i can learn i can see some great gameplay and and kind of uh, copy that in in into my offline or stream experience. No, absolutely. That makes a ton of sense. And yeah, it's much like me where I do play pretty much every single killer. Um, I've gone through the same grind that you are currently going through, which is trying to get every perk on every killer. Um, I have successfully done that on all 24. The 25th is on the way with uh, the Cenobite. So I understand that grind all too well. Uh, if you're ever looking to grind blood points and want to get really good at a specific killer, highly, highly, highly recommend uh, grabbing the Blight. Uh, because Blight is a, a, a ton of fun, but B, just a fantastic um, you know, killer for blood points. They are an absolute blood point machine where you pretty much max out your deviousness every game. They're hyper lethal being the S tier killer that they are. Um, so I did what was referred to as the 60 million blood point challenge, trying to get 60 million blood points in under 30 days, which was a challenge created by Scary Drop Bear, another Dead by Daylight content creator. 
Um, and so I did that pretty much with nothing but blight. Uh, so I would definitely advocate for uh, barbecue and chili blight. Uh, really good stuff in that regard. You know, blight blight's insane. I have, uh, man, I've seen some amazing blight gameplay. Um, I actually went and got up against the Sergeant Fidget's blight, and when that gave me a little bit of nightmares. Um, didn't want to do that again. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of good stuff with blight. I I, I want to learn more about blight, the flicks, and everything like that. It is it is beautiful to see. Yeah, the biggest thing that I can recommend if you are looking to pick up Blight is a lot of uh, people on PC, a lot of what they do wrong is they do wrist flicks, where they just flick the wrist, mainly because whether you have a smaller, you know, uh, mouse pad or what have you, but that's really what does limit you in that regard. Uh, a Blight main who is part of my community and part of COTF actually gave me the tips while, while I was using Blight and saying, make sure you're using your entire arm. You know, even if you have to pick up that mouse, use your entire arm because you're going to be able to get those really, really tight flicks. And I have definitely found that to be true. So a small tip, but uh, a good one nonetheless. Otherwise, it's all about just map knowledge, map knowledge, map knowledge. Knowing how to get from one side of the map to the other using every bit of object, you know, every bit of object and range you can. Uh, to really apply a ton of pressure because no expects a blight coming at you a mile an hour with uh, Tinker Proc to say the least. Yo, those blights zoom. They, they, they zoom out there, man. I have, man, I have been caught before. That's a, actually a great tip. To be honest, I'm gonna use my whole freaking arm now, dude. I never <laughs> thought about that. That's great. Yeah, no, it seems really small, but like it does go a long way. Uh, in improving your blight gameplay because before I was kind of just flicking with my wrist and especially my right turn flicks were just really really weak because I don't have that much mobility turning out to the right with my right hand whereas now when I go fully out using my mouse across my entire mouse pad it goes a long way and now it just shows that my left-handed flicks are a lot worse because my keyboard and my mouse pad are a little bit too close together so once in a while during stream you'll just hear a big clink there's my mouse and my keyboard smashing together. I'm like, well, I got the down at the very least. On the downside, though, I have a dent in my keyboard now. <laughs> so awesome, actually. I was just thinking about that. I was like, my mouse pad area will probably get destroyed. Uh, if I end up playing more Blight, uh, poor keyboard of yours, though. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. It happens way too often. It becomes a bit of a meme now uh, over on my channel. Uh, but do you want to give you guys all a heads up and an update? We do have everyone in the lobby at this current point in time, and we are just waiting to confirm both Survivor and Killer's builds. And once we do, we'll be going right on in with Object of Depression on Killer's side. To give you guys a quick breakdown that you guys will not see, we currently have Pustalork on Killer, uh, T.Y. Talus Warden as Nancy Osaka as Ace, Scuba Steve on Claudette, and Low Pro Apprentice on Nia. So very, very exciting stuff to say the least. And I'm excited to see overall, uh, you know, what they are bringing to the table um, and what they're able to uh, really do here uh, Survivor-wise, obviously we saw a really good showing on Killer, but are going to be able to apply that same type of pressure here on Survivor. Now, let me pick your brain, Gil. If you were this this killer right now, you, you go and nurse? Or, what are you doing here? It's a really interesting question. Honestly, I would probably say at least an A or S tier killer, which would be expected. Um, as far as, you know, nurse specifically, I'm not entirely certain. Um, uh, with that being said, I do want to give a quick at question to RRF. Can you do me a favor for me and confirm for me that Low Pro Apprentice is on the Cerebral Assassin's roster? As I was doing a quick check, and I don't believe they are unless they have changed their name. I do not see them, actually. So if you could confirm with Cerebral Assassins, that would be much appreciated. For those who are not aware or are new to, uh, uh, not Object, but to Champions of the Fog, one of the major rules that we do have to avoid any conflicts of people switching teams too quickly or picking up last minute uh, survivors or killers is that you do need to have a slight cooldown period uh, prior to the beginning of the season. Uh, that cooldown period was lifted, so you could have added people until end of day last night. Um, so I do not see them on roster and just want to get that quick confirmation. 
that is one guy deep. Okay, thank you. There we go. Uh, so that that explains a lot. Uh, you know, maybe one guy D uh, played a lot of uh, Billy on stream, which could make sense. But give the name. Give the name. <laughs> oh, that one guy D and he's Billy in game. Okay, all right, that makes more sense now. Honestly, uh, actually, hmm? while I have you, can you check the dates for Skippy Steve? Is that good? Uh, repeat that one more time. Apologies. The date for Scuba Steve's ID being added. Uh, the date for Scuba Steve, as long as it was not uh, today, they should be good. It was on the 6th, so we okay. should be good. As I mentioned earlier, we have lifted the, the roster um, cooldown until their first match, and now everyone who is added does is subject to that cooldown period. Uh, but we are good with Scuba Steve. We should be good to go, and I believe we are just waiting on confirmation for builds. All right. So, maybe Nurse, maybe not, maybe Blight. What do we got here? If I had to look Wins. at Wrecker's Yard, Blight, I just don't feel because there's a lot of those tight yeah. loops. And for anyone who plays as or plays against a lot of Blight, one of the biggest things that you know is that you want to keep them on tight loops and ensure uh, that you're keeping them on the other side of it. Because as long as they don't have the objects to bounce off of, then they're kind of just a one M1 115 killer, right? And sometimes you kind of get caught out after that initial hit. But beside that, you know, I, I don't think Blight would make all too much sense here. Um, yeah. On this map, I could see maybe a Bubba, as they do have that interest rate ability, as there's a lot of pallets, not a lot of vaults to work with, except on the outskirts on those tiles, kind of to the eight cardinal positions of Shack. You know, you have your north, south, west so and so forth you know there's kind of eight tiles to really work with otherwise it's just all pallets so an insta shred killer i could see like bubba at the same time if you're really wanting to put the pressure onto streetable assassins here i'm just thinking another nurse honestly listen if if billy comes out i'm i'm a, i'm a sucker for billy i i will oh my god i'll lose it <laughs> Dude, I, I could really definitely see it. Some of the funnest. I like, could definitely it, see it. Though I've seen a lot of people saying, you know, though Billy really good, obviously not as good as their heyday. Um, you know, I people are saying they definitely needs Noed in order to be useful in the long run, since he is really just an M1 killer with an insta down ability. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, if we do see Billy, I'd be interested to see how strong they are, especially against this team. But I do see that Giraffe has unmuted. Giraffe, any updates? We're good to go. We're good to go. Thank you, thank you. So in that case, I'll let the teams know. And we'll be moving on into the second trial of Division 2 Round 1, Cerebral Assassins versus Object of Depression. And so, I, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see if we confirm our suspicions here. Will it be a nurse? Will it be someone a little bit lower tier? How comfortable is uh, Pustalork? And uh, based on what I've seen prior... I think I have my uh, my guesses. Here we go. This is going to be exciting. Uh, buckle up. Buckle up. This is a... Uh, I'm already getting chills for this one. Man. I, I, I see a good outcome here. No, 100%. Uh, I'm very excited. I, I'm hoping for a very good round because if we do see a very, you know, demanding round by object of oppression here, then that means that we go into trial number three and trial number four, where it really is anyone's game, where if we see another blowout by cerebral assassins, that then puts all the pressure on object of oppression for those last two trials. And personally, I don't know about you, but I love seeing a very tight, close game where it's anyone's match. Oh, absolutely. Those are the best types of games. Are you kidding? This sweat. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. And we are on a surprising choice, actually. I was not expecting this. From Pustalork, I really was expecting a nurse, but we see a huntress. Oh, man. If there's anything I love more than seeing those hatches go, I haven't found it yet. I love this stuff. Let's see what the huntress can bring to the table. Yeah, no, this is going to be very exciting and a very oh, early start. find into the Corrupt Invention. That was less than 30 seconds. And so amazing, amazing start here by Pustalork. And that will result in their first hook. Are they going to try and go for basement? I think this is going to be a bit of a stretch if so. Though I will uh, note something. They're moving a little bit faster than normal, wouldn't you say? 
Just a tad bit faster than a normal Huntress killer would, would, would run. Yeah, so interesting choice, not to spoil it, but yeah, there is agitation being used this match, which is a surprising uh, perk to see used in comp, to say the least. But I mean, with uh, Basement being in middle here with Huntress, and being how dangerous uh, Huntress can be when it comes to exiting the basement, maybe it's a very strategic choice, as we do see a very quick here quick hit here by the Huntress. They do not follow it up on the BT, but do get a hit on Osaka nonetheless. Yeah, great strike, great, great strike by this Huntress. I mean, a lot of pressure in this area. Three, three survivors in this area right now. So, I mean, that this is this is this is a good start. Great uh, start. Absolutely, really great start by the Huntress. Really, really good showings thus far on their usage of hatchets because at the end of the day that is your lifeblood but i will say this little back and forth that we're seeing here with no hatchets in hand might be a dangerous play to say the least it was it gave the time for the survivors to actually spread the map out oh what a beautiful hit yeah gave them time to kind of spread out give them time to reset and obviously we do see that gen also going off yeah this is a. Uh... It, this is the control of the of, of the huntress, right? If she can control this area right here. It's uh, and get some downs. Beautiful, beautiful start. I think it's not just here though. I really think it's going to be this hill. I think this hill is going to be a really key spot for the huntress. We actually saw in season zero, Alex the plug of four Dwight's one locker using that hill though was in a different position to their advantage and using it beautifully to the point where they were able to just sit there, look across their kingdom, and uh, be a king in that moment. I actually remember that game. I was going to bring that up. That was a great Hunter's game. I, I watched that and I 100% wanted to be a better Hunter's after that. <laughs> No, absolutely. Yeah, no, right now for me, like, my two killers that I'm focusing on the most to try and improve upon is Huntress and Billy. So I always love to see some good Huntress gameplay and go, okay, what can I learn from you? Because the biggest thing that I suffer from is, what do I do around tight loops? Do I just force the pallet? Do I go for a mind game? Like, what is the play? And so far, we're just seeing some really good play by Boost Block, where so far those questions are left unanswered, to be honest. Absolutely. They, I mean, being able to get another survivor in a basement i know people say the basement's not as great as it used to be but it, the control area i mean you have your basement you, you 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 control the whole the whole outcome right now because you're daring those survivors to come to you you know that's what you're doing you're saying okay look at me i'm on my hill now i can do whatever i want come to me and, and let's see what's up now 110 percent and at the end of the day you know it really is dependent on the killer whether or not Basement is strong. And I think Huntress is an amazing example of a very strong killer as you're able to really pressure that Basement exit and just say, hey, if you come up these stairs, BT or not, I'm going to hit you with a hatchet and then an M1 thereafter. So you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, this, is, this is my domain. That's what the Huntress is saying. Exactly, exactly. I mean, do you see that progression on... A that one guy D, otherwise known as Loper Apprentice. And Huntress not wanting to give D any real uh, uh, hope of escape here as they go back to basement and kind of try and slow down the game. And D at this point only has 30 seconds until they are dead on hook. And Pustelar just going between this slug and basement, seeing can I get this slug in basement as well? Or will the survivors go Absolutely. for the unhook? Right now, you go for the unhook, but really, I mean, there's a lot of pressure going on. Yeah, no doubt, but I will say, these survivors not falling under it and just saying, you know what, cool, you want to keep that person in basement, be our guest, we're just going to do gens and go for the escape instead. Yeah, great showing, great uh, actually move by the survivors, getting the other gen just barely done. Uh, it puts a little bit more pressure on our killer, uh, but right now, this is, uh, this is looking... It's, it's looking close. It, it's very hard to say who exactly is going to come out victorious. And really, it's going to come down to how much gen pressure these survivors have been able to apply all the while. Uh, while Goose Lork here was pressuring basement uh, that entire time. If, uh, you know, we didn't see a lot of gens hit 70%, then I think that Huntress has a very good possibility of, you know, taking control of this match and just 
systematically one by one uh, killing off these survivors. Absolutely. Uh, and we'll see what, what what's going on with these other survivors, whether they're resetting. I, that's the play, you know. Do you reset against this Huntress? Do you get on a gen? Uh, right now, it's looking a little tight for them. Oh, not to mention that, but I didn't notice it at the time until this look after that hook, where I don't know if you saw what I saw, but I saw probably one of the worst three gens you could possibly have yeah. against Boost Lord in this moment, where all three of them are right around that hill. And like I said, you sit on top of that as a huntress, you go, this is my kingdom, and you are my peasants. Absolutely, I just literally saw what you saw, and this is, uh, this is a spicy situation, because uh, huntress can put a lot of pressure with her hatchets in. This is this is her her kingdom, and you just you're like I said, you're just part of the experience, and here we go. Yeah, no, one hundred and ten percent. Honestly, if I'm post look here, I'm just gonna sit up on that hill. I'm gonna watch the hook and watch that generator regress in the meanwhile, because honestly, you know, it's your game to lose now. Yeah, you were handed a, a beautiful three gen, and now it's yours to do whatever you want with it. Exactly, exactly. And we do see that final progression on uh, Warden. So that really brings it down to a two survivor game. And honestly, these survivors might just be going, okay, we are in dire straits. Let's just find Hatch and call it a day. But Pustalork surprisingly going for the pickup on Scuba Steve, who is on Death Hook. Do they know where Hatch is? And if not, will this come to bite them in the butt later down the road? We will see this right now because I, I was very surprised by that as well. Like it almost, almost it happened in our first game where they did a pickup as well. So I mean, either you know or you just go, you know what? I can still. Oh wow! Yeah, it looks like the answer was they did not know. Then that will give them the escape. Though it is only three points. Three points can be the difference between a win and a loss. So we'll see if this does. Uh really go against OD in the long run as the final score for that match is 33 to Pustalork the Huntress an object of depression to 17 to Cerebral Assassins and I think that is really going to hurt them as that last survivor who did escape Osaka had three full hook states to give even if it was one hook two progressions that's 10 points that they could have gained in that moment you know really bridging that gap from that first match and so the current score overall is 47 object of depression to 60 cerebral assassins so there's still that 13 point gap that object of depression has to make up in this upcoming match like you were saying that's 10 points you know if we add 10 points you you have a tied game Exactly. No, absolutely. That would have been, I think that would have been a tied game at that point, actually. If it yeah. was 13 points, the additional 10 minus the three. Yeah, it would have been a tied match at the end of that. So I don't know if maybe Pustler kind of falling out to eat the pressure or what, but it really did result in a loss of points for them overall. And I think a really bad decision in the long run. And we'll see if that bites them in the butt later. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, great game by by Bustelard with Hunters. That was beautifully played. Um, but that detail, that attention to detail, right? That that can sometimes bite you um, and, and and cause cause you to lose up a couple points. And at this point, you know, ten points, the difference between you guys losing and and being tied up right now. So uh, we will see what happens in the next couple of games. But um, and if it, if that even comes back to bite them, but we'll see. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, outside of that one mistake, in my opinion, flawless match, really great usage of Baseman there as Huntress. And I think that really shows how powerful Huntress can be on certain maps and in certain situations, as we did see, you know, Baseman used again and again and again. And it's just really unfortunate for Cerebral Assassins, you know, leaving that three gen until the last gen was needed and where Boost Luck was just able to, you know, sit on the hill and claim their territory. Yeah, absolutely beautiful gameplay uh, by Pusilar. Just waiting it out, using using basement as her castle. You know, she that you, you come in and, and see what's up, right? And uh, that three gen was uh, was was kind kind of crazy for them, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's back to round three, and you, you still got to show up, and it's still a close game. It's anyone's game right now. Um, both of these teams are, are looking fairly even. No, absolutely. And I believe that we have Certified Persona here 
on trial number three for Object of Depression. Uh, I will give a quick heads up as I don't believe their uh, DVD ID is currently updated as I tried to find them over on uh, on my friends list and I do not see them. So if we could give them a heads up real quick, uh, Giraffe, and just let them know uh, to provide their updated DVD ID uh, so that both teams and myself can have them added. Would be much appreciated. But overall, you know, very excited for this next trial where I, you know, I, I'm very curious to see if they're going to bring in an S tier killer. We saw their Huntress, which some people claim is A tier. In my opinion, for looking at an all up tier list, not comp focus, just general, you know, Huntress is a solid B tier killer. Arguably could be A tier, but I think just with the fact of how it can go either way based on the map, I'd say solid B, you know, B plus up there if Deathslinger, some of the best anti loopers in the game. Um, so, with that being said, um, you know, really curious to see if they go t for the throw and go for that S tier killer here. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see who they pick. Um, especially like yeah, you said, I, I'm, I agree with you on the, on the Hunters. B plus. Um, I honestly, it wouldn't surprise me they brought out Deathslinger. You know, if you save your your nurses to for another day, um, just seeing the dominance that they had with Huntress, I would not be surprised. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I would not disagree with you whatsoever. And it looks like uh, the only difference, just to confirm, with uh, Certified Persona's name, they have a space. Uh, they have a space between their name now. So I'll update that in their DVD IDs, just to make that a bit more clear for those in the future uh, who will be playing against uh, Object of Depression uh, later down the road. Oh, well, that... speaking... Hmm? Oh, go ahead. Oh, what are you going to say? I was going to say, I have seen some crazy deaths on your gameplay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, here, it is It is wild. Some of these hits and no scopes, the, the, the precision, the timing. Uh, holy smoke. So, Deathslinger under the right person's hands can become just a, a deadly, deadly, deadly killer. No, 110%. And it really does depend on the map again. You know, a lot of these anti-loop killers are very map dependent. Uh, Deathslinger on Grim Pantry could be very strong as there's not a lot of taller loops to worry about. At the same time, it's a bit more of a like medium large sized map. Um, where, you know, you can kind of be caught out uh, in the middle of nowhere, both as a killer and as a survivor. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. It's the same reason why I know that uh, when looking at this map, my team and I were looking at certain killers. Why uh, Pyramid Head right now, I was looking at it, I was like, do I want to play Pyramid Head on uh, Grim Pantry? Like, mm, elevation kind of sucks on this map. Uh, same reason why I would probably, you know debate playing Billy or Bubba or anyone that really suffers from even mild elevation changes with their power usage, Doctor as well, uh, you know, can be really detrimental to their overall play. Absolutely. That elevation change can, can hurt you big time. I agree with that 100%. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm uh, excited can... for this trial. Yep, real quick, I did see Giraffe uh, did unmute. What's up? Uh, can we get a score confirmation? Yep, score confirmation right now as of this moment is 47 Object of Depression to 60 Cerebral Assassins. All right, thank you. No worries. Um, but yeah, so that elevation change will definitely determine a lot here. Uh, obviously, one of the major things that we saw last match will also be things like... Uh, basement placement, whether it's over in shack or in main building. So that will also prove to be an interesting thought uh, and see if these killers really focus in on basement as much as they did last time. Absolutely. that The basement game, gameplay has been awesome. And it's been good to see uh, just how these killers use it as, as a almost a trap, right? Like they daring, man, very daring to say, hey, Come into my basement if you if you want to, um, and uh, we'll see if that keeps happening today. I look forward to that. Though. I love the basement. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's not used very often more because, as you mentioned earlier, it's definitely a weaker thing in the game now from what it once was. You know, back in the days where uh, Munch Ride was actually used, 
uh, to now where uh, basement, if it depending on the killer, it's just not useful anymore. You know, there are times where I play uh, certain killers and go, you know, I'm right next to basement. I don't want to hook there. I, 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 you know, I'd rather go somewhere else and leave them out in the open so I can apply pressure in a different way. Um, but, you know, hunches especially, that last match really did change my mind. A lot of times the hunches are like, I don't really want to hook in basement. I want them to be out of the open so I can go for that long cross map, uh, you know, hit off a hook if I can make it work. And then that one, I'm like, you know what? If basement's within my vicinity, not a bad place to be because I can just sit at the top of those stairs and be like, okay, now what? Exactly. I think some of the funnest things I've seen, though, is, is, a, is a basement trapper, though. I'll give it up to one of my basement trappers out there. That's some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen in my life. It's it's good stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And who knows? Maybe we'll see uh, we'll see a basement trapper eventually. You know, there's some, some very cheeky things you can do with trapper, to say the least. That yeah, I would clap my I would clap all day for that. That's some good stuff. But uh, right now, you know, eh, you you kind of have to go for the throat again, right? So it's a little bit even on both sides. You're only down thirteen. 13 is an easy easy score to come back from, um, but it does require a little bit of work, and that's where, ah, I don't know. We'll see if they end up bringing someone A tier, or if they go for for the throat and bring out a, um, a, a nurse or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's very possible that Object Obsession kind of went into this and underestimated the Cerebral Assassins team based on the, you know, gameplay they saw from Season Zero, and so it's very possible that, uh, you know, they'll go in with an S tier here, but I do see Giraffe has an update for us. Uh, we are good to go. Awesome, awesome. In that case, I'll let this lobby know. And we'll be jumping on into Trial 3 of the Vision 2 Round 1. Cerebral Assassin's Object of Depression here momentarily on the Grim Pantry. So here's a question for you, real quick. You know, Killer Main, last eight months, Grim Pantry. If you had to pick your build are you going for ruin pop which is really the killer meta or are you going for ruin dine on this map specifically honestly i ruin on dying you know i want to have ruin as long as i can when right? pop is great but against these kind of survivors when you're playing uh survivors that, that really know what they're doing um i, I want to stay stay with ruin as long as possible you know i, I want to get them off gens make them rethink their strategies Confuse them a little bit. I think uh, your ruin on dying kind of does a job because well, you, you cleanse on dying. You, I, I still got ruin for another whatever. You know how much longer I want. You know. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. The big thing is, I don't know about you, but man, my totems have been going out quick in pubs. Like I'm not even playing comp here, and it's like, okay, ruin's gone in. 30 seconds it's like okay what content creator did a video on every single spot for these freaking godforsaken totems i know what starva did one on like grim pantry and backwater swamp i'm like okay i appreciate you as an educational dead by daylight player but like stop it i want my ruin to stay alive for a little bit longer absolutely oh my goodness there's nothing that hurts you more as a killer when your ruin dies off in 10 seconds <laughs> no 100 but surprise surprise no a tier killer, Bubba I put in like top B, some would argue A tier in comp, but we see a Bubba on the Grim Pantry from Certified Persona. Someone got going after my own little heart, dude, I love Bubba, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Now I absolutely love Bubba too, and you know, Bubba has definitely become uh, one of my uh, comp focuses, as I have proven to be pretty good with them. Bubba, Freddy, Pyramid Head, and a few others, though I can play everyone. But I, I am surprised to see Bubba on this map specifically. As I did mention before, that elevation change from those little hills that you get on this map can actually prove to be really detrimental and very hard to see objects that you're going across where you're going, okay, you know, I'm going to try and get a survivor down, but you might end up hitting a tree or a rock instead because of it. Let's see how much the survivors use that in their favor as well. No, 100%. And speaking of uh, totems, we do see Ruin out very, very quickly, as uh, that totem is the only one that we saw on the map. You know, could have been a Devour, but let's be honest, definitely Ruin. Absolutely. Uh, like we talked about, there's nothing that hurts more as a killer in just pubs as seeing your Ruin die off at 30 seconds. 
Now, 110%. Something else that's really surprising not to see here in this situation is... No bamboozle. Like, when I think of Bubba, I think of Billy goes, Ah oh, yes, bamboozle. Like, there are just certain perks on certain killers that are auto-include. Demogorgon has saved the best for last. Uh, Monster abuse on Deathslinger. For Bubba, it is bamboozle. Yeah, it's a little bit surprising. Bamboozle does level the, the playing field for good old Bubba, so that is interesting to see. We'll see how this chase ends up going though. Yeah, I see a lot of mind games, a lot of uh, turns here to try and make usage. But as I mentioned, Grim Pantry is just such a pain for Bubba because of those little objects here and there that can really trip them up. And we already are completely through Corrupt Invention, a full two minutes. And this is where if I'm the killer, I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Because fact of the matter is, if I don't get it down the first two minutes, there's something wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, if you win a full corrupt, you don't have a down. You're starting to say, okay, what do I, what's my next move? Because I got to make a move quickly, or it's gonna get out of hand. Yeah, no, absolutely. And though I do love this back and forth uh, with Bubba against this ace, you know, just really, really suffering here. And I'll be honest, I've seen some of Certified Persona's gameplay in the past, and it's not looking like I normally see. You know, this is some really sloppy plays. A lot of tantrums happening. Uh, no downs with one gen already complete. This is going to put Object of Depression in a really awkward position if Certified Persona keeps up at this pace. Yeah, I am getting a little worried as well. Two gens down, no hooks. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens in the next, you know, two minutes. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think these upcoming downs are really going to make it or break it for Bubba. And like I said, you know, we're seeing exactly what I said. I think less experienced Bubba players, um, you know, will know the pain that Certified Persona is experiencing here. We're just tantruming off of every single object. Um, you know, in some cases, it could be seen as purposeful. I know, like, old Bubba, you would tantrum on purpose because the tantrum time was actually shorter than your cooldown. Uh, but with new Bubba, you just lose so much good value here. And, you know, even with that argument, I don't think, uh, that is really to be said. And Certified Persona just, uh, I think maybe slap himself on the face real quick, like, okay, come here. You know, I need to, need to do something because I'm just hitting every single object uh, around me. At this point, you, you know, you gotta get somebody. Yeah, even if it's just one hook into a camp th uh, third stage, you know, you need something here to give your survivor team a little bit of hope going into trial number four, because, you know, with a 13 point deficit to begin, and, you know, going into potentially a 0k zero hook, at least as of this moment, you know, that would be a devastating blow to Object of Depression and would prove for trial number three to be their swan song. Yeah, this is, uh, this, you gotta get somebody, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta camp them, you gotta make sure you, you know, you kill confirm that person and then hopefully someone else tries to go for the save and you get that other person down as well and then your game, but right now, uh, another, and we see another generator go off, so we'll see. Yeah, especially if these last few generators were kind of looking at their positioning, you know, the, of course was uh, Grim Pantry itself, but now we also have, you know, platforms which had some really good progression going for it. And I do think this should result in a down here, the first down for Certified Persona, and the question now remains, what do they do? What's their decision making? Are they going to go for, you know, the 1k uh, camp or are they going to just try and pressure that on the end? And honestly, I think the 1k camp is necessary here. You know, face camping warden might just be the play and ensuring just some points, if any. But it looks like Persona decides, you know what, I'm not satisfied with that alone. I'm going to kind of venture on out a little bit, you know, peruse my territory and see if I have any opportunity for additional points here. Yeah, I mean, they're venturing a little bit farther than usual, but uh, the gates are open. And now if you are Cerebral Assassins, you just leap. Yeah. Right? You know, that, that is that is the play here. You just get that three-man out. Don't risk it, especially not against the Bubba. The exit gates are pretty far away from this hook. So, though it might be tempting, I just don't think it's worth it. No, absolutely not. If you're a you just... Yep, they just did that. Exactly. They just ran out and call it good. 
Yeah, that is fair. And it looks like uh, what I'm being informed in chat is that uh, their computer might be uh, given out on them. So certified, like I said, seen much better play from them in the past. And looks like they may have had some frame droppage on their end, which is painful to say the least, but unfortunately is the, the price you pay in this regard. Uh, when it comes to, <clears throat> to DVD, you know, performance is not always the best, but uh, it can definitely be painful in those type of scenarios for sure. Yeah, it, it can be painful, um, but great sure my survivors to just stick in the gens and just get out of town, you know? Yep, survivors have no qualms uh, making use of that time given to them by uh, performance issues, and especially not in comp. And so at the end of that, for that trial, we're looking at 38 in favor of Cerebral Assassins to 10 for Object Obsession's Bubba uh, uh, Certified Persona. So final score as of this moment is 57 to Object of Depression to 98 to Cerebral Assassins. I mean, that is a 41-point match, and so it's going to be very hard for Cerebral Assassins to lose, and very diff just as difficult for Object Session to win. Uh, it's not impossible, though. Uh, 41 points is within the Survivor's capability. They just pretty much have to do exactly what we saw here, but just a little bit better. They're going to have to get a four-man out for the full 50 points with pretty much zero hooks um is it impossible absolutely not is it improbable yeah it, it's going to be difficult it's going to be a hup ill battle for object of the set of uh, object of the depression to say the least yeah i mean it, it can it can be hard but it, the thing about it is like if you're cerebral assassins and you're killing now what well, you know you i wouldn't throw out an, an s tier killer or even an a plus killer you know no, 110%. Honestly, in this situation, I would just say, you know, bring in maybe not a throwaway killer, but probably an M1 killer. Because if we're looking at the breakdown to make it very clear, basically, uh, Object of Depression needs to deny them two, three hooks. But on top of that, if they want to, they could simply face camp the first survivor they get and kill them out the game. That ends it then and there. That would be the absolutely. end of it all. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. All they need is just the one survivor to go down. Yeah, it's going to be a very difficult uh, uphill battle for Object of Depression. I have faith that it's possible. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we could see a huge upset here. And here's the thing is, it's a little bit of chess, right? If you're Cerebral Assassins, you're going, okay, well, do we save our killers for... for uh for a uh, next match or do, what do we do here um and if if, if you're object of depression if so if they end up being bringing in m1 killer or you know your trap or your clown something like that you're going okay there there might be light at the end of the tunnel we can do this right and so um both 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 teams are going to be looking at this very strategically and saying okay what what do we do next yeah, no, 110%. It's going to be very interesting. I'm curious to see how safe these survivors play it. You know, will they be just playing very immersed, jumping on and off of gens continuously to ensure, um, you know, gen pressure while ensuring that they don't end up in chase? You know, I'm fully expecting to see... Um, you know, corrupt intervention, are they going to wait it out? You know, what is the strategy going into this match for Object of, the of Depression? I'm going to always say Object of Obsession because of the perk, uh, even though I know right, it's Object yeah. of Depression. <laughs> no, I, I feel you on that. It'll be interesting to see. Um, I, I expect them to, to really just get in there, get your gems done, and get out. It's not impossible, like you said, but also... You kind of have to take take what what the killer gives you, right? What killer are they going to play? How are we going to play him? It's not. It it'll be a great upset, you know. It'll be an awesome one, and we'll see we'll see if it happens. Yeah, one hundred ten percent. I I'm very excited for this match, nonetheless. I think the biggest thing is win or lose, you know, play your heart out because at the end of the day, even if this is you know going for uh 
you know, going for silver and not gold. It's still practice nonetheless, and this is going to be your only time playing against this team. So it's best that you really get that practice in, especially coming back in the comp scene. I do want to uh, clarify that Object of Depression was at a comp scene for a little bit, was a bit on hiatus, so they are back now. So, you know, maybe they're just kind of shaking off the rust here. So for all those teams watching for the future rounds, you know, I would not... Uh, mark them down as a team not to be worried about. I, I have a feeling that uh, we'll see a brand new object of depression here uh, come round two of Division 2. And the thing is too, like, you can't... If you take it easy, it doesn't show you... If you take this film and watch it later, and you're taking it easy, it's not going to show you anything, right? But exactly. If you do your best and, and you actually are, are looking to do the impossible, you can go back and go, okay, this is where we kind of messed up. This is where we can do better. This is where we could, we, we could take more, uh, do more jams or, or do whatever you can, but really look at it and go, cool, let's let's get better at uh, what we're not doing right now and, and move on. But you cannot, if you take it easy, you can't look at that on your team and, and, and fully get better. You just can't. Right? Yep. It's a throwaway. So. No, 110%, it really comes down to you need to play as if you're playing against Oracle, that you're playing against the best teams that DVD has to offer. Uh, which, uh, speaking of, it, it's kind of interesting to mention that uh, I've actually gotten some interest from some of those uh, higher, well-known teams like Oracle in COTF, which is really exciting. And I want to thank uh, not just my co-hosts, like uh, Gannick is here, but all of you for bringing the spotlight to Champs of the Fog uh, because we are getting closer and closer to hitting partner on Twitch and that could lead to some really cool stuff later down the line, whether that be sponsorships or otherwise, which will A, mean that we can get a larger prize pool for the upcoming seasons, but also be able to uh, pay coast like Gannick is here uh, for joining me today. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, this is becoming a big and welcoming community. And I have to thank all you guys, as well as my mod team, for uh, keeping uh, keeping the reins on this community. I know comp side can be a little bit rowdy sometimes. But I've uh, been watching chat here and very happy with uh, where we are. Being very welcoming, very wholesome, explaining the game and the point system to newcomers. Uh, and being supportive of one another, yeah, we, we trash talk once in a while, and that's okay, but we keep it tame, all things considered. Hey, it's not competitive unless you, unless you trash talk, right? You People have sides, they want their team to win, there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with a little trash talking in here. Exactly, exactly. But, uh, with that being said, I do see all the survivors here in the lobby. Do you want to confirm real quick, uh, with Giraffe, if we are good to go? Still waiting on survivor boats. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Coming in. So it looks like I, we are currently in the works. I'm so pumped for this game. This one right here, you know, do the impossible. Show us what's up. I know they're testing builds or whatever you're going to do, but show us what's up. You know, show us that competitive spirit. And let's freaking go. I got, I'm super pumped for this one. Yeah, honestly, as much as you could very easily write off object of depression in this uh situation we could very easily see a huge upset with uh this match where you know survivor team just comes out swinging and does exactly what we saw last match uh you know obviously i think that would come down to running man making some huge mistakes as well but the great thing about this is that we could see just some amazing survivor gameplay and you know depending on that it could just be such an amazing thing to witness where we get that four man out on two hooks and survivors are using every single thing they possibly can to get that W. Yo, know, that's why you play the game, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. That, that's, that's why, why the game. That, that's why I love Dead by Daylight. A lot of people ask me, how can you play Dead by Daylight for 30, 40 hours a week on stream? Like, I just could not do it. I need to take a break. I'm like, honestly, because I look at this game like a game of chess and like a fourth dimensional chess because as a killer, I have to pay attention to seven gens, uh, 12 hook states, 12 health states, four perks per survivor. And as survivor, I need to take, um, you know, need to take a look at, you know, what's the killer running Four perks. I have seven gens to pay attention to the health states and hook states of my team and so on. 
So many... it, it's so it's... fascinating what, uh, what can awesome. come out of Dead by Daylight. Absolutely. How many times have you said, okay, that team, they don't have a chance to win, right? In any sports. Yep. Right? And then what do they do? They pull off the impossible. And nope. you're like, wow, this is insane. That's what we're looking for right now. But real quick, I do see Giraffe unmuted. We are good to go. Awesome, awesome. In that case, I'll jump over to Spectator, let them know that we're good to go. And this will be trial number four of round one, division two, Cerebral Assassins versus Object of Depression. So uh, we'll be joining up on in momentarily and switching on over. And I'm just really curious now, outside of you know survivor talk of what is or is not possible, I'm just curious now what Running Man's going to bring. Um, you know, what exactly are they thinking? Are they going to bring in, you know, an A or B tier? Obviously not an S tier. I highly doubt that one. But, you know, are they going to bring in maybe a Legion? I think this is also kind of fun because in those moments where it could be any way anyone's, uh, or not anyone's game, but, you know, is kind of a shut and close case for all intent purpose, it does allow for killers to bring in someone that you normally wouldn't see in comp, right? You know, it's crazy as you said Legion. That was my first thought as well. <laughs> I've, I've seen I've seen Running Man's Legion. I was going to say maybe Bubba as well. I know Bubba, Running Man loves Bubba. Um, uh, I think it would be someone fun, fun like that, you know. But I, I think Legion Legion's probably up there as far as uh, as who, I, who I'm thinking Running Man brings. Yeah, I mean, realistically speaking, I, I would love to see more Legion. I do wish that certain... Uh, killers would get just slight tweaks. I mean, to be fair, first killer that I want to get tweaked into by daylight is freaking Trapper. Trapper's just been oh, done yeah. so dirty for the last five years. Like, he was the killer to play, and nowadays, he's just, he is a bit of a meme. Yeah, it's so satisfying to play when you actually get those traps and they do work, but, like, they need to do something. It could be the simplest things of giving, like, stitched bag by default or trap setters by default. But, like, behavior's just done nothing to the OG, and it's such a shame. Yeah, man. Trapper needs some love. Some big-time love. I just want to give Trapper a big old hug and let him know he's okay. And a 110%. But also, I think that same thing goes to Legion. Like, we saw how OP and oppressive Legion was. Like, OG Legion, for those who remember that. Freaking Legion who ran as a 115 in power, but would just swing across the map. I just remember hearing the lunge sounds, like, the entire time. And then just consistently getting hit by Fail Frenzy. But, like, I don't want, like, OG Legion. I don't think that is necessary. That's just not fun to play against. But, like, they also do need to buff Legion just a smidgen, I think. Yeah, I'm looking for if they ever do buff because I do love playing Legion. That was one of my main uh, killers that I used to play just for fun, and and it was a lot of good stuff. I do feel like just a little bit more of a buff, and and people play more Legion as well. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, one of my favorite killers was for a while when I was thinking like, do I want to main anyone? Like Legion was a thought there, and I'm like, no, you know, I'm really good at being an educational the daily player. I'm gonna play every single killer so I can provide tips and tricks. Uh, through and through and still though Legion is just one of my favorites to go back to and play a few matches of Susie Legion I love but with that being said let's take a look see and oh, interesting yes. we see another Bubba I don't know if this is running man saying all right let me show you how it's done or what but we do see Bubba which in my opinion is surprising you like you're in a very strong winning position uh you realistically speaking need one hook in the face cam them. Bubba can do that well, to be fair. So maybe maybe we see a basement Bubba? Maybe so. I'm looking forward. Running Man loves loves Bubba. That's his man. That's his number one favorite killer out there. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's it's gonna be very interesting. I mean, I like I said before, uh Bubba is one of the killers that I run in comp. What I am surprised to see, and I do need to run the data on this is to see award-winning Chili in Chili and not see award-winning Chili and Beastmark. Uh, for those who don't know why I question that, so award-winning Chili and Chili increase the duration of each charge of Chainsaw Dash. Uh, a lot of Bubbas, in my opinion, or a lot of Cannibals do something wrong, which is they don't use their ability uh, for distance as Chainsaw Dash actually increases your speed to 130%. Um, so, you know, Beast Mark, though, increase that even further. And with uh, Ward Main Chili and Chili, extends that duration even more. So I actually have to do some data and look and see which one's better. But we do see that first hook, and we see uh, 
Bubba and Basement. I think uh, we might see some Basement Bubba after all. So, what do you think here? Is uh, Rayman just going to camp this out, Canicus, or are they going to uh, go out and venture out into the wild? Uh, I, I see a little bit of proxy. I think that's what he's going to do. Uh, he, he, we've seen the basement be used as a as a fortress of come on, get in here, um, and come play some games with me. And I think that's what Running Man is doing right right this second. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, this is really all they need as of this moment. And so, you know, I think that they may have just looked at it and went, okay, let's play it safe. Let's get that first person out. Let's, uh, you know, relax. We're going to have some chats down here. Uh, and uh, at the same time, I get to protect my precious chest basement, right? Absolutely. At this point, there's nothing, there's nothing else you're going to do. You're just going to hang out, get, maybe grab a little chili, and just... Uh, <laughs> maybe just maybe that's life. why. Maybe that's why Rayman <laughs> brought uh, Ward Winning and Chili. You know, you, you wanted that first serving, but, you know, we're going to be here a while. Let's have that second serving of Chili, too. Absolutely. And this is really uh, the start you were not looking for as a, as a team because that down kind of... Not throwing the pallet was probably a big mistake. I, I feel like they should have thrown that pallet down. I don't know about you. I think that that was their intention, but with that being said, you know, haunted ground activating kind of makes you sweat a little and you go, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. And so very easy to make mistake as I think that's exactly what happened here. And when then, oh, okay, Bubba, haunted ground. What do I do? Do I drop the pallet? Do I not drop the pallet? <laughs> so a lot of questions Absolutely. being asked you in that can, moment. Yep. Absolutely. And yeah, Running Man's just waiting it out. Yeah, he's like, okay, come on, die faster, will ya? And looks like that's exactly what happens as we have about five seconds left on that uh, timer. And we do see that last hook. And now Bubba goes out into the distance and searches for her, his next victim. Yeah, but at this point, you, you kind of have to, you know, rinse and repeat. You're going to get your person down and, and do this almost the same thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, for Bubba, that is a very easy task uh, for him to do. And we see that next chase, and looks like they're bringing him over to the Grim Pantry, uh, trying to gain a little bit of pressure here. And we do see that last gen completed. So I get a feeling that this is probably going to be our last chase of this match with uh, Nancy Sorty. Uh, and will probably result in, uh, based on positioning, maybe another basement play. Maybe, just maybe. Yeah, this might, yeah, this might be another basement. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be interesting for sure. I mean, it just would make a ton of sense and interesting firecracker play. I was not expecting that to actually hit. I heard it starting to go off, but looks like uh, Running Man just caught that corner there and was not able to evade it in time. Yeah, I was not expecting that. That was a good play. But you're seeing Bubba at, at what it is, and that is it, using his chains to get back to Survivor and just smack. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's some really, really interesting plays that you can uh, use with Bubba, because a great example of uh, Prime Bubba usage, in my opinion, is to, you know, break or shred a pallet with three charges, and after that shred, you immediately go into another chainsaw dash. You don't realize it as a survivor, but it can be so deadly, to say the least. And a cheeky play by Phantasm here and not working out in their favor. Yeah, that was uh, super cheeky. And now, I mean, good unbreakable play. But Running Man still has that one slug that he can take to hook. Yeah, I mean, it uh, it worked out in the sense that Sorty was able to escape, but unfortunately uh, does result with Phantasm on hook and... Whether or not the, the points matter in this case, that will result in a 2k 6 hook, but 4 progressions to be fair. So final score for this round, we're looking at 29 to Object of Depression to 20 Cerebral Assassins. Final score is 86 Object of Depression, 118 Cerebral Assassins. Cerebral Assassins coming out the victor here. So amazing, amazing stuff on both sides. Really, really close going to that third trial. Just, uh, you know, unfortunately, Pusilark not able to give their survivor side uh, enough of a bridge to cross. And that's what you'll, I think you'll see during the whole day is that the one match is going to be the difference, you know. 
that one match, what happens? It, it, you end up really getting it for your team and, and getting those points as a killer or as a survivor team or the, do things go your wayside, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And with that being said, you know, I do want to congratulate Cerebral Assassins and OD. Amazing, amazing game. So GG, well played to both sides. Should definitely hold your head up high. Um, and for those who were not the victor, in this case, OOD, you know, better luck next time. I'm sure you guys will be going into the practice. Uh, and I expect to see some really good gameplay from you in the remaining nine rounds for Division 2. So, plenty of time to show what you got. Absolutely. Both teams played really well. Uh, this is just the beginning, right? This is just the beginning, and uh, I think you'll see great stuff. Exactly, but with that being said, everyone, that there will end our stream for right now. We actually have three more matches today. We have coming up next our 2 p.m. match with Prestige versus Undyne Alliance at 2 p.m. CST, so only 30 minutes away. Um, let me take a look and see who I'm joined by today, actually. Uh, Ganicus, I do believe that you are going to be able to, you know, relax, take a break for a little bit. Uh, but my producer, my co-host joining me is going to be, let's take a look, Vader, actually another new co-host, uh, though a member of COTF from Season 0. So the OG Vader will be joining me at 2 p.m. for Prestige versus Undyne Alliance, so make sure you guys are here for that. And we have another match at 4 p.m. CST and one at 6 p.m. CST. I do want to give a quick shout-out to the 4 p.m. CST match, as that is my team. But most of all, actually, we actually have a new primary host on. We have Rugard, uh, who everyone knows from Vigo's Court and Chains of Fog, joined by all four Domo, so really uh, cracked hosting team. Uh, that will be streaming the sample text match against... Who are we against today? We're against Regicide. So definitely make sure to be there for that and a 6 p.m. match as well. Yeah, looking forward to the games. Looking forward to uh, to the night. It's going to be an exciting group of matches. And, it, and it, I don't know, just, just buckle in. You know, just buckle in, guys. This is going to be beautiful. Awesome. Well, that being said, Ganicus, I do believe you stream, right? Yeah, I do. So if that, you know, with the with the mic set up and the camera, I'd kind of expect it. Um, with that being said, if everyone over here wanted to go say hi next time you're live, where would they find you? Uh, Twitch.tv, uh, Ganicus, zero underscore zero. I'm there Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Mountain, Mountain Standard Time. A lot of killer gameplay, a lot of awesome stuff. Um, but hey, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to be here. This is a... What you what you guys are doing is awesome, and I, I look forward to our, our next uh, shoutcasting event there. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it as well. And for those who don't know me, I am Mark, a.k.a. Guildspire. I'm an educational Dead by Daylight player, here to teach ghosts how to play killer, and survivors how to play against killer. Definitely stop by the stream. I'll be live Mondays through Fridays. I'll, as Well, I'll be here every Saturday and Sunday. So with that being said, everyone, we'll see you later at 2 p.m. CST, just in 28 minutes. On that note, bye-bye!